Hi, I'm Dove Sinclair with the Power of the Patient Project. My guest today is Dr. John Heil. Dr. Heil is a licensed clinical psychologist and sports psychologist with a clinical practice focusing on pain and injury management. He is a fellow in the American Psychological Association, author of Psychology of Sports Injury, and numerous professional papers on sports, pain, and injury. He has also worked with Olympic professionals and aspiring athletes. He has consulted at three Olympic Games, and today we'll be discussing sports psychology and mindfulness. So welcome, Dr. Heil. Well, thank you. Um, so first, can you just tell us a little bit about why you got into sports psychology and why you're so passionate about it? Uh, my interest began as an athlete. Uh, I could see that mind and body work together. And I was well aware that sometimes uh, difficulties in focus and concentration or distraction would interfere with my own performance. Mm -hmm. And as a undergraduate, became a psychology major and naturally gravitated towards uh, issues that related mind and body uh, together. Uh, in interestingly, my high school running coach, I was a distance runner, my high school running coach was a Zen practitioner. Oh. And, and so I was trained in that style. But I didn't understand exactly that that was the case. So it was years later that he actually explained all this to me. Mm -hmm. I just thought he was an unusual coach. So as I was you know, developing my skills as an athlete, I, I was really already being trained in this way. And it, it made me much more successful at that stage of my life in high school than I had been earlier when I was younger. And I think that helped reinforce the benefit of mind and body working together. Yeah, that's so interesting. Um, as an athlete myself too, I never really, you know, step back to actually look at how my mind reacts with my body. So it's really interesting that you got that experience from such a young age. So I know that you created specific training guides for fencers and swimmers on mind and body relaxation. So how is mindfulness beneficial to athletes, especially in such a mental focused sport? As an athlete, as you know, you want to control everything in your environment. And that begins with self-control. And at the, at the pinnacle of self-control is um, control of your own thought processes. And I think when you are able to control your mind, then you can control your body much better. Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that's the, the kind of evolution of sports psychology, really. And that's why uh, mindfulness makes sense in that environment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. And you also specialize in sports injury. Can learning mindfulness help um, in recovery from an injury? Uh, I, I think yes. Uh, recovering from injury is uh, a parallel process to being an athlete. It, it requires uh, physical skills. It requires goal setting, commitment, focus, concentration, body awareness. It involves all the same things. And so in the same way that mindfulness uh, can help performance, mindfulness helps injury recovery, which is performance in a different venue, essentially. Mm -hmm. And now how does an athlete kind of start to uh, learn mindfulness? How do you train athletes to be mindful? It's really uh, a couple, two, two different ways, I guess, to go about that. One is just in a general way to help them be more aware of themselves, uh, what their thoughts are, what they do, what their habits are. And then the second way is to teach uh, specific techniques. Mm -hmm. Typically, we start with um, mind-body relaxation techniques. They're very easy to learn very widespread, they're intuitive, and they lay the foundation for other types of uh, mindfulness skills. Uh, in, in sports psychology, we talk about mental training. That's been the, the, the hallmark of, of performance enhancement sports psychology all along. Mindfulness is a new word in the vernacular, relatively speaking, just culturally and in sport as well. But when mental training is done well, uh, it involves 
it's sensitive to the same issues as mindfulness. Mm -hmm. So what does um, mind training involve? Uh, mental training involves focusing on developing skills that help control the body uh, br through breathing, muscle relaxation, better body awareness. Mm -hmm. And then the use of primarily mentally, the use of your mind is like a training ground, like a theater where you can anticipate events and prepare for them. You can rehearse skills. You can uh, practice using psychological skills in specific competitive situations. So you can prepare for uh, an event that may be highly stressful. You can prepare for an event that may be infrequently occurring so that when it does happen, you feel like you've been there or you have a sense uh, of what, to, what the challenges will be, what to do, and some developing at least a little bit of a comfort zone with that being there for, in that environment and in that situation. Right, yeah. It sounds a little bit like um, meditation. Yes. So interestingly, historically, uh, when I was in college and graduate school, we had what I would call meditation 1.0, which was transcendental meditation. It's a very simple technique, very easily learned, also very effective. It was very trendy at the time. And it came at a moment when there was a renewed interest in mind-body disciplines, especially those that came from the uh, Asian tradition. Uh, mindfulness is the work of John Kabat-Zinn. Mindfulness is meditation 2.0. It's the next generation of meditation type practices found our way into the culture, but meditation is timeless. We, we, we it, it uh, from whenever we have history, we know there's methods of meditation and mental awareness and self-control. So it's, uh, a really deep, rich tradition. It's Eastern, it's Western, it's religious, it's scientific, it's secular. And if you look at that, you see it's been there all the time, but for whatever reason, uh, this moment, people are ready to understand the idea of meditation in the, uh, under the rubric of, of mindfulness. And I think we have John Kabat-Zinn to thank for his work and kind of introducing this next level of meditation, which is much more sophisticated and much more effective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so interesting. Uh, do you find that once you teach an athlete mindfulness that they are better focused and um, they use it in their everyday life to become an overall mindful person? I think so, yeah. Uh, one of the great things about sport is that it's a great place to learn skills in a kind of a high pressure, uh, high demand, emotionally laden environment. And when we learn skills in that setting, we can transfer them to other settings that have that same set of demands. So I think it's always said that sport uh, builds skills. And it's especially true for psychology because those are the skills that are most obvious, obviously and easily transferred from a sport environment to whatever environment you would be in, any other performance environment, whether it would be work, professional, uh, or, or just high stress encounters in, in any setting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. Um, and, you know, from a, an athlete point of view, too, I think that, you know, meditation, learning mindfulness is definitely beneficial um, within your sport. And like you said, outside of your sport as well. Um, so those are all the questions that I have uh, for you today. Is there anything else that you would like to add? Uh, I would like to add that uh, I feel like sports psychology has really come a long way in, in um, helping athletes and in expanding uh, uh, self-awareness and, and social awareness uh, in this frame. And, uh, you know, it's been great to be a part of sports psychology. It's not so new now, but when I first started, it was quite new. And... Uh, there was not even a clear way into it. Um, so for me, um, as I developed as a graduate student interest in mind-body relationship, and as I continued to compete as an athlete now, actually in a different sport because of injury, uh, I was interested in these meditative traditions. So my doctoral research was uh, a training program that, that was sampled uh, world meditative traditions and created the kind of an extensive training program, which which I studied and which was the result of my 
uh, which was the focus of my doctoral research. Wow, that's so neat. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much for having this discussion with me. Um, I'm sure all of our viewers are going to appreciate it, um, especially myself. I learned quite a bit. Well, that's great.